Hello, folks. Uh, welcome back to the live stage here at CNET's CES coverage. 2013 CES, we've got so much going on here at the show. And we just did our Best of CES finalists unveiling. Among the finalists in there, in the car tech category, is some new innovation coming from Ford. So I want to talk a little bit more about that, because I'm the car guy, I'm the car tech guy, one of our that. car tech team, I and Julius it. Marchwicky does too. Julius, welcome, thanks for being here. Thank you, thank He's, you for having me. You're the head of the Ford Sync AppLink section of Ford's technology. Explain what that is for folks that maybe are not doing apps in their car yet. Uh, fantastic, uh, thank you, Brian, and, and thank you for the, the nomination. We're extremely excited. You earned it. Um, AppLink is technology that uh, lives on a smartphone and inside of our vehicles, and it enables uh, your in-vehicle controls through voice or through steering wheel to control the smartphone application that you already have on your iPhone or Android device. And even BlackBerry, if you still have a BlackBerry. Yeah, that's right, you still got some BlackBerry Absolutely. support in there. Um, here's the thing, is this what we call in the tech biz uh, HMI connection you're making, the letting the buttons on the physical part of the dash uh, control the phone app and get my eyes where they should be? Exactly, so one of the things that we always say is keep your hands on the wheel and your eyes on the road. Yeah. We know that our customers are two times more likely to pick up their phone while driving if their in-vehicle technology doesn't meet their needs. So what's really important for us is to make sure that the technology in the car meets their needs. And if you don't do your job right, you or any automaker in this kind of integration of apps in the dash, they don't give you a lot of time before they go grab the phone again. Right? Exactly, exactly. So it's really There's important. There's no barrier. They'll say, "Forget this." Unless we get the phone, pick very, it up. Very, very important for us to uh, to focus. You know, focus the uh, the use of voice inside of the vehicle. Right. So you control these applications right. in that in that and fashion. And getting it up on a big monitor that's static and large and auto optimized. Exactly. Exactly. You uh, before we get into the really deep part of this, let's sure. go at sort of the really accessible yep. part, which is you rolled out some more apps. What are some yep. of the new ones you've got supported yeah. in your cars now? Sure. Well, in addition to the fantastic apps that we have today, such as Pandora, Stitcher, uh, TuneIn, iHeart, uh, iHeart Radio, or iHeart Auto, uh, as, they're, as they're called now. Yeah. Um, we launched a, a number of new applications. Glimpse, for example, you know, the application that lets you share your location uh, with your friends and family. So yeah. you no longer have to respond to that text, mes text message that says, hey, where, where are you? You can just glimpse your location, straight from the vehicle, voice activated. I can say, send a glimpse to Brian Cooley. I call that overshare.com, <laughs> but that's just me. That's just me, not everybody has to be on the same page. Yeah. Uh, what's another one you implemented? Uh, well, so uh, another great example, AHA Radio. 30,000 yeah. streams of content, right? All yeah. voice activated, voice enabled. Uh, so you can say, play my weather station. It'll give you your localized weather, uh, and then it can give you your social feeds, mm -hmm. and you can listen to internet radio or news or music. Um, and then some other fantastic news apps, for example, uh, Kaliki, which reads uh, magazine content to you, Human Red Voice. Uh, same with USA Today, the magazine, or uh, the newspaper, every day, digitized into voice, Human Red for you, now, all, all voice of activated. These are converting content that might be media rich into audio, right? You're yeah. not displaying a simple version of the USA Today on the screen or anything. Exactly, exactly. Okay. It's all voice enabled, it's read to you in voice, you hear a human read to you, for example, today's news stories or today's money stories. Yeah. Uh, and all voice activated and you can use the steering wheel controls to skip through content. Um, Wall Street Journal Live, for example, same thing. All of the Wall Street uh, Journal radio content provided to you. Uh, oh, you know, yeah. you can skip back and forth between stories. Um, now, fantastic. we were talking about some of this audio content. You're doing more and more where you're bringing in terrestrial radio stations yep. through various apps here. Um, and folks, I think, sometimes say, okay, wait a minute, I got a radio in the car. It works real well and it's real yeah. easy. Volume, AM, FM, presets, we don't know how to use it. Why the complication of adding radio station apps? Yeah, well, you know, the, the radio stations are starting to see this move into digital, right? Um, and, and content is no longer, you know, you send it and you forget it. Uh, content is now, you know, they digitize it, they tag it, they store it, so you can bring it up later. Yeah. So one of the things that we're seeing is... So on-demand radio. On-demand uh, interviews, morning shows, you know, you may miss your favorite morning show that day. Yeah. And so you're going to want to hear that later, you know, later in the afternoon, for example. So you can bring up that content with your voice from, from some of these uh, radio applications like WRIS. Uh, you can access, you know, interviews and, and uh, their morning show every day. 
just if you missed it, right? Yeah, it's so, going to change the world of radio broadcasters because they're used to having their local so. market to themselves and Absolutely. not having competition from stations hundreds of thousands of miles away. But now yeah. you can listen to a New York station in Detroit. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, and I'm a uh, I'm a Chicago guy, so I like sometimes right. I like listening to my Chicago stations in right. uh, in Detroit. So and now you can enable that. It's fantastic. Yeah. Now let's move to the future. Those are some of the new apps you've got. Yep. The really big thing you announced that is less sort of, you know, gettable by the consumer, yeah. but it's huge underlying tech is you've opened up your cars and your sync app technology to developers. Decode all that for us. Oh, it's, uh, it, well, what we've done is we've launched what's called the Ford Developer Program. Uh, you can go to <clears throat> developer.ford.com and access all sorts of resources mm -hmm. that, that effectively give you the, the ability to, you know, just to deploy, test, develop uh, software um, that works inside these vehicles. So the Pandoras, the, all the apps that we're talking about, we'll give you the SDK they have. It's there. It's on developer.com. SDK, developer software developers kit. Software development kit, absolutely. Okay. Documentation, sample code, uh, online tips and tricks, uh, a blog, blog forums, I mean, and, and most importantly, uh, for developers that are there to support you. So we have an entire team of people that are, that are helping developers now through this developer program, this ecosystem yeah. that we're creating. And that's the interesting part. You know, folks, the, the, the development communities that have really fostered uh, well are because the companies behind them, a Google and their Android or Apple, it's not just because they've exposed all this technology developers need, but some companies do a particularly good job of working with developers, having actual bodies at their company that say, yes, we'll help you get your app to work when you're stuck or optimized or to do whatever. There's still a lot of high touch in the world of bringing developers because you guys are up against iOS and Android primarily. Well, here's what's amazing about the Ford Developer Program is that it doesn't actually require you to learn anything about the automobile. We give you libraries for your Android and iPhone applications. That, yeah. That's how AppLink works. So They kind of translate them to Ford? You drop, Compatible? You drop in this library and you have APIs. We've wrapped services. Yeah. So for example, the voice service. You want to say something to uh, the driver with our text-to-speech engine. It's the API, it's called speak. And you, you issue a speak command and you give us the text yeah. you want us to speak to you. Yeah. And so it's, it's, a fantastic, it's a fantastic way because I don't have to learn something specific for the vehicle. I can drop this library in. Most of our developers have They're done it They're kind of like a bunch of macros, day. right? That it, help them get Absolutely. things done in a shortcut within your system. Absolutely. Um, in, in wrapping up this idea, what's the vision? Let's say one year from now, we talk to you about how's it going with developers developing apps that will then pair from, the, they never leave the phone. They're always Correct. on the phone, but they're integrated the with the car in a, in a rich way. Exactly. Um, what do you hope will be the goal? Will, you have a, will there be a Ford app store? Well, definitely, definitely not a Ford App Store. We want customers to, to follow the same trends they're doing today, which is downloading from the Apple App Store or from Google Play. So no new, no new stores, right? We're going to help categorize. We're going to show where applications are available. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you're going to use your phone and you're going to download from the store that you've mm -hmm. already downloaded, or the world has downloaded 55 plus billion applications. No, you're not going to reinvent the wheel and get into the Don't, app delivery and sales not. business. No, okay, no. got it. All right, this is very interesting stuff. You know, we will check in. I'm going to hold you to this a year from now, come back here and show us how it's I going. I would love to be back. I want to know what, the, what apps are going to be coming up in the next, because this will be real this year, right? Yeah. Okay, yes. so we'll yes, see what yes, some yes. developers have done it's, to develop for Ford and other right cars. Yeah, developer.ford.com. Absolutely. Great. Julius, thanks for being here.